The date is May 2nd, 1964. On the early hours of Saturday morning in the port city of Saigon, two Vietcong commandos would climb out of a sewer tunnel where they would attach two loads of explosives onto a hull of a United States Navy aircraft carrier docked in the port. Moments later, a massive explosion could be heard across the port city, lighting up the early morning sky and waking the port city up. By sunrise, five Americans would lay dead in a massive 12 foot wide hole caused by the explosion on the starboard side of the carrier. This would mark the first successful attack on a US aircraft carrier since combat operations during World War II. But how is this possible? How is the most powerful and technologically advanced warship in the United States Navy's arsenal sunk during the height of the Vietnam War? How were two Vietcong commandos able to sneak in one of the most well-defended military ports in the world? How was it even possible that two Vietcong commandos would sink a United States Navy aircraft carrier? This is the sinking of the USS Card. The USS Card was the epitome of class. Being commissioned on November 8th of 1942, the USS Card was originally intended as a cargo ship but was reclassified as a boat class escort carrier where she saw extensive action in World War II. With a total displacement of over 8,000 tons and a max speed of up to 18 knots, the USS Card would have a capacity for up to 24 fighter and anti-submarine aircraft. During her service as an escort carrier, the USS Card became the flagship of a hunter-killer group formed to destroy German submarines in the North Atlantic. In fact, the USS Card would be accredited with sinking over 11 German submarines in offensive operations in the Atlantic Ocean during the war. By the end, the USS Card would play a significant role in destroying German submarines, making it the second most successful ship of her class. It's also worth noting that the USS Card and her task group were awarded the Presidential Unit Citation for their actions, being the first escort carrier to receive such an award for combating German submarines. By the end, the USS Card would be placed out of commission and transferred to the Atlantic Reserve Fleet until she was reactivated in May of 1958, re-entering service under a civilian crew with the new prefix of USNS Card under the military transport service during the start of the Vietnam War. During the height of the Vietnam War, the vital port city of Saigon would play a key role in transporting and receiving military equipment to the South Vietnamese government as part of the United States military commitment to the country. From 1961, the USNS card would regularly dock in the port city of Saigon to unload heavy artillery, armored personnel carriers, aircraft, and helicopters. The port itself was situated between the Tay and Binh Nguyen canals and was about 700 meters wide from one side to the other. To prepare for the arrival of the card and other American ships which pulled in, the port itself was constantly guarded by the South Vietnamese military who deployed a number of different naval vessels to conduct patrols around the port, while the surrounding shores were protected by an elite army of the Republic of Vietnam and airborne units to disrupt Viet Cong activities. Undeterred by the level of protection from which the South Vietnamese government provided, the USNS card would still remain a large target for local Viet Cong commandos. It wasn't until May 1st of 1964 that Viet Cong reconnaissance units spotted the USNS card as it sailed through the bay and entered the port to unload military equipment as per usual. This information would be relayed back to the North Vietnamese 65th Special Operations Group whose new objective it was to attack and destroy this escort carrier. This would be carried out by Lam Song Nau, a commando from the 65th Special Operations Group who would be tasked with designing the best strategy to destroy the card. Now's father, who had previously worked at the port as a tradesman, memorized all the tunnels and sewage systems at the facility. With this vital information, Now's father advised him to take the sewer tunnels as they were the best way to enter the port where American ships were anchored. This would later be confirmed and concluded that the sewer tunnels would be the best access point for him and his men to attack the ship. On the early hours of May 1st, 1964, the day before the attack, Lansung Nao, with the help of Win Fu Hung, an electrician at the port facility, 
who was also a member of the 65th Special Operations Group, assembled and inspected their equipment, which consisted of 180 pounds worth of C4 plastic and TNT explosives. Later that night, at around 9 p.m., Nao and Hong would load the explosives onto one canoe and headed straight down the Saigon River in two separate canoes towards the commercial port district of Saigon. To avoid any detection by the South Vietnamese authorities, both men mingled with local workers to blend in while also waiting for the right time to sneak into the sewer tunnel. Shortly after 6 p.m., both men headed towards the warehouse number zero at the commercial port until a South Vietnamese patrol boat spotted them and stopped them. The police patrol boat commander questioned both men about their activities during that night. Now claimed that he and Hung intended to go on the other side of the river to buy new clothes at the market. To avoid delaying any more of the operation, Now bribed the police patrol commander who allowed both men to move on but demanded another bribe when he returned. When the commanders arrived at the sewer tunnel, they assembled the bomb device with each man carrying 88 pounds worth of explosives through the sewer tunnel. When the commandos emerged from the tunnel, they swam towards the broad side of the USNS card, which was anchored near the sewer opening. Now and Hong then attached both moms to the ships, with one near the bilge and one at the engine compartment just above the waterline. Now then inspected both bombs and stuck the bomb onto a pole and connected it to the batteries and wires, setting off a timer. At 1.10 in the morning, both bombs are set and ready to go. Both the commandos retreated back to the sewer tunnel, boarding their canoes on the other side, and rowed back until the same police patrol boat stopped them earlier and was waiting for them. While the approaching patrol boat was arriving, an explosion was heard and a bright light could be seen all over the port. The South Vietnamese patrol boat would then start its engine and race towards the USNS card, instead of extracting another bribe. By sunrise, the USNS card had settled 48 feet below the river with five Americans laying dead. In the days that followed, the US Navy divers were redeployed to the port of Saigon to quickly salvage the damaged carrier in hopes to refloat the ship. Over time, it would take 17 days to refloat the USNS card, where she was towed back to undergo further repairs. Ultimately, the attack on the USNS card marked a successful mission for the North Vietnamese commandos and marked a huge propaganda win for the North Vietnamese government during the height of the Vietnam War. This attack would mark the first successful assault on a U.S. aircraft carrier since combat operations since World War II. This was the sinking of the U.S.'s card. Hey guys, thanks for watching and as always, like and subscribe for more videos.